What's up you guys, Rex here. Don't take aspirin less than two hours before or less than four hours after ibuprofen. Here's why. Real quick, my name's Rex and I'm a first year medical student and every Sunday I share with you something I learned in my past week of medical school. So this past week we started talking about pharmacology and I think an awesome example of something cool I learned is the interaction between ibuprofen and aspirin. Generally, whenever we talk about drugs, we're talking about some sort of molecule that can go into our bodies and bind with receptors and impact the function of that receptor. They can either impact that function by causing the activity that would happen when a molecule that is normally within our body binds with that receptor. That could be like an agonistic mechanism. So it binds and it produces the normal physiological effect. We can talk about something that binds antagonistically where it binds to the receptor, but it causes it to not activate its normal function. And it also prevents the molecule that typically binds with it from binding with it at all. And we can also talk about things that bind allosterically, where we have some receptor, normally things bind here. Instead, this allosterically binds maybe onto the side and changes the shape of the receptor that differs the function in some meaningful way. And when we're talking about ibuprofen and aspirin, they bind to several different things throughout our body depending on the dosage, and that's something I don't quite know all about yet, but in low dosage, we can talk about them binding to the COX-1 receptor in platelets in an antagonistic way. So the, both ibuprofen and aspirin bind to this receptor, COX-1, and it stops it from working. And when that happens, basically the platelets are not as easily able to form a clot, and so that's why aspirin's a blood thinner. And there's also a lot of other effects, but for right now, we just need to talk about that one effect in low dosage for the purpose of this video. In addition to talking about the ways drugs can bind with the receptor besides being antagonistic, agonistic, or allosteric, we can talk about the way it binds to that receptor. It can either bind reversibly or irreversibly. And so in the case of aspirin, it binds irreversibly to the COX-1 receptors. So once it's bound, that platelet for those COX-1 receptors will never work again. It is irreversibly inhibited. And so with aspirin, there's actually pretty long lasting effects that it takes a couple days for our body to just make new platelets that will be able to function with their COX-1 receptors. Ibuprofen, on the other hand, binds reversibly to the COX-1 receptors. So it binds to the receptors for a little bit and then it can hop off and then it can bind in and hop off. And so that brings us to a third basic thing we can talk about in pharmacology is how long does the drug actually last in our body before it either breaks down into something that is ineffective or it is cleared and excreted by our body. And so both ibuprofen and aspirin have relatively short half-lives and they relatively quickly get metabolized by our body, which is what put together, they give us this two hours before and four hours after window. And so the reason for this is, is that if you give aspirin just like an hour before giving ibuprofen, both the aspirin and ibuprofen are going to be in your body at the same time and they're going to be competing to bind to the exact same receptor. And during that time that they're competing, aspirin only has a half-life of like 60 minutes. And so some of the aspirin is going to be completely destroyed and broken down and excreted by our body before it has the chance to bind irreversibly to those receptors and be able to have the desired effect of that aspirin. So if you're taking aspirin like an hour before ibuprofen, there won't be time for the aspirin to have its full effect. Similarly, if you give ibuprofen first and it's already binding reversibly to those COX-1 receptors, when the aspirin comes in, there's nothing for it to bind to because all the receptors are already taken up and the aspirin is going to be either broken down or excreted by the body before the reversible binding stops from the ibuprofen. But this reversible binding of ibuprofen only lasts, give or take, four hours before the ibuprofen has finished its reversible binding, it's bound, unbound, and it's been either broken down or excreted by the body. And so now you're in that after four hour window, it's fine to give aspirin again that it will have its full effect. And so now this isn't something that's like dangerous to take ibuprofen and aspirin at the same time, but if you wanna take both and have them both be as effective as possible in order for aspirin to have as many receptors available so that can bind irreversibly too, it can't be competing with ibuprofen at the same time. So you wanna take your aspirin at least two hours before taking ibuprofen or at least four hours after taking ibuprofen. And so finally, this is like really satisfying for me 
as someone in medical school that I've sort of critiqued my pre-med education, that I've gotten pretty far in my education, so to speak. And I don't know how the heck aspirin or ibuprofen, something super basic like that, even works. So I'm finally starting to scratch that surface as I move forward into the next chapter in my medical education as we start our body and disease course where we learn about pharmacology and different pathological processes in the body. And so if you want to catch more of my videos where I share really cool stuff in the coming months, make sure you subscribe, hit the notification bell. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, leave them down below. I'll read and respond to every single comment. As always, like the video if you like the video, dislike the video if you dislike the video. And until next time, don't be ordinary, go be great. Mm -hmm.